Hello friends, Namaskar. How to respond section 148A notice is a very important topic which I thought would be useful to the public at large in the context that in the present season of say Fab or March, usually income tax department is taking up new assessments with the procedure of section 148A. So since the availability of background material on section 148A is not abundant, Therefore, I thought that why not I should create a video to update the knowledge of public at large on the concept of section 148A. So through this video, I am trying to put up my views for the benefit of people at large to understand so that they can enable to understand what is this section 148A notice, how they can respond to it, what are the precautions or what are the key points which they should consider while responding to this kind of notice. Now my dear friends, I am starting my discussion with this first question. Why section 148A notice? See, as I said that the history of section 148A is not too old. Rather, it has taken color from the provisions of section 148. What I am trying to put up, my dear friends, if the time has elapsed long, department wishes to assess somebody's income which has not been taxed then department generally issues income tax department generally issues notice under section 148 because it wishes to complete section 147 assessment but later a new section 148a was inserted in the law to provide that before you issue a notice under section 148 to an assessee asking him to file the return of income so that an assessment under section 147 may be completed, first you as income tax department complete the process under section 148. So it is a preliminary examination and if in this preliminary examination process the assessee could satisfy the department that look I don't have any income escaped assessment then probably there will not be a 147 assessment at all. But if you cannot satisfy, then it will turn up into completion of assessment, opening up of the assessment rather under section 147. Now let me put up some interesting discussion through section 148. I'm just giving you the section directly from the law. The title of section 148, my dear friends, is issue of notice where income tax has escaped assessment. And this section says, before making the assessment, reassessment or recomputation under section 148, 47 subject to provisions of section 148 means before issuing your notice under section 148 calling for return of income department will first complete the process of 148. So this gives us an answer that why section 148 a notice because without this notice there cannot be a 148 notice calling assessee to file return of income. So now this gives us an importance or thirst to understand the procedure of section 148a which now I would put up before you. Now since I have given you a background of the insertion of provisions of section 148a that okay it is a preliminary examination let me also discuss with you now the bare act provisions of section 148a. What this section provides my dear friends the title is conducting inquiry providing opportunity before issue of notice under section 148. So my point again gets established that yes, before issuing 148A notice, 148 notice, 148A procedure is important to be followed. This says that the assessing officer shall, so it makes it mandatory for the assessing officer to follow it. He cannot skip it. So every point which I am going to now discuss is mandatory to be followed by the department. The assessing officer shall, before issuing any notice under section 148, conduct what it will do? It will conduct an inquiry if required with the prior approval of specified authority with respect to information which suggests that income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment. So the assessing officer has certain information in his possession which suggests that the income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment in the case of assessee and he wishes to conduct an inquiry. This inquiry may be conducted directly through the assessee or maybe through the third party also say like they may write a letter to the bank, they may write a letter to the stamp duty authority with whom you have got your property registered. Then after conducting inquiry, what department will do? It will provide an opportunity of being heard to the assessee. Again, it is a must process. So department has to give an opportunity of being heard to the assessee. How? By serving upon him a notice to show cause within such time as may be specified in the notice 
being not less than seven days and but not exceeding thirty days from the date on which such notice is issued or such time as may be extended by him on the basis of an application in this behalf as to why a notice under 148 should not be issued on the basis of information which suggests that income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment in his case for the relevant assessment year and result of inquiry conduct if any. A very important point to be noted here, my dear friends, is that IT department previously did not disclose the information to an assessee while issuing a notice under 140. But now, as and when this procedure of 148 comes into action, become applicable. IT department is sharing with the assessee that, look, we have following information pertaining to you. And please explain that whether this information is correct, whether you have duly paid your tax liability or you have short paid your tax liability. And the assessee is being given a proper opportunity of being heard, which is very important. How this opportunity will be provided? It will be provided by way of serving upon him a notice to show cause and the time period of such show cause notice that is the time given to the assessee may range from 7 days to 30 days. Assessee has to try his level best to justify that look I have no escapement of income hence no 148 notice is required. But if you could not satisfy to the department you could not justify them then the department will open up assessment by further issuing you a notice under section 148. Now, this section is further continuing and two more parts of it are one, once you file the reply, what department will do? That is the EO shall consider the reply of the assessee furnished, if any, in response to the show cause notice. So, they have given you opportunity of being heard through notice. You will file your response. They will consider your reply. After considering your reply, what they will do? They will decide, that is the EO will decide on the basis of material in, available on record, including reply of assessee whether or not it is a fit case for issue of notice under 148 by passing an order. So, you will close 148A proceeding by way of passing an order. So, we professionally understand it like this, that if there is a 148A clause A or clause B notice, this is opening up of the inquiry. And if there is a 148A clause D written on the subject line, then it means that an order being passed under 148. You may say, Mr. Bhatti, if I am not uh, agreeing to this order and which say they agree to open up an assessment in my case, what will I do? Can I file an appeal before CIT appeal? My answer is no. That is not a remedy. Then in that case, what will happen? Then department will issue a notice of 148, will complete an assessment under 147. And against this assessment, if you are not satisfied, then you can go into appellate authority, that is CIT appeal. But 148A order is not appealable. However, Finally, after conducting these three steps, one, doing inquiry, giving an opportunity to the assessee and considering the reply of the assessee, here what I discussed that department, that is the EO will pass an order with the previous approval of specified authority. What is the time period of such decision? Within one month from the end of the month in which the reply referred to in clause C is received by him or where no such reply is furnished within one month from the end of the month in which the time or extended time allowed to furnish a reply as per clause B expires. So finally, this order will tell you that, okay, whether your case is dropped or your case is finally taken up for assessment under section 147. Now, just for your reference or to meet out your curiosity, I'm just trying to put up that, okay, how this notice may appear. Say here, the government of India, Ministry of Finance, all these things, income tax ward are written. Here, your name and address would be written your PAN, the financial year, which date is the date of issue of notice, the DIN number through which this notice being issued. Then department is saying that, okay, we are calling information under 148A or maybe B with regard to the purchase of immobile property and payment which you have made to non-resident or you have received from non-resident for the relevant assessment year. So this is the subject line. After this subject line, the department is saying that, okay, kindly refer to above. Here, what I'm reading is just an example. The content of this notice may be separate according to the transaction involved in a case. So what I'm reading is just an example. As per information available in this office, you have payment of rupees such and such on purchase of immobile property. So this assessee of whom I'm discussing here has probably purchased an immobile property, which is in the knowledge of department and payment made to non-resident of rupees so-and-so after deduction of TDS so-and-so. So there are two aspects. One, 
that the relevant assessee has purchased the property department is wanting to know the source of that purchase second they also would like to know that okay what tds is deducted from this assessee why he did not return file his return during financial year relevant to ay so and so but failed to file return of income so department is saying you have not filed the return so hence the following inquiry may allow to be conducted so department kara ke okay department is saying okay we want to conduct following inquiry you provide us copy of pan card return of income you provide us copy of purchase deed computation with the source of investment you provide us the detail of payment which you have made or which you have received as a non resident along with the source and also give us the complete details of all bank accounts for the relevant assessment year this inquiry letter has been issued with a prior approval of competent authority you are requested to provide the requisite information on or before this and this date it means that now the assessee is supposed to prepare a point wise reply on these questions and to justify that look there is no escapement of income at my part if you could do so then your matter would be dropped if not then the assessment would be finally taken up under section 148 and if you want to see that okay mr vartia in my login if i want to check that whether any proceeding are opened up in my case under 148 how could i reach out to that if you log in you have to click here that is at pending actions once you click at pending action then in this tab there are following options here out of these option you have to click at e proceedings at e proceeding my dear friend i would again repeat that where we started from we started from dashboard pending action e proceeding in e proceeding under self for your action you can see that okay this is pending under section 148a now you can connect that okay why i discuss 148a assessment here is so and so here it is your pan here it is your name since when it is open when it will be limiting that is will be finishing here you will be interesting to know if any notice is issued to you under 148a so in the present case suppose there are three notices maybe one to the assessee to the, the to the third party so you can click at the view notices option further once you click at view notices you can find all the notices which are issued maybe to the assessee or to the third party under section 148a and to each notice you want you can click here after clicking here suppose you want to file the response along with the document then you have to click at submit response at submit response option my dear friend you have two option either you can give partial response or you can give full response and you can also write your story here if somebody is saying that okay mr vartya i want to attach certain document here yes you can attach certain document here various options are given to attach the document in the pdf format subject to certain data limit suppose you cannot upload all the document in one data set you can reply in parts also so that all your documents are duly uploaded so what i am trying to suggest here that assessee has to click here put up his reply so that that reply can be seen by the department before reaching to the final conclusion finally my dear friends if i would again come back to my topic how to respond section 148a notice and would like to summarize to an assessee to whom 148a notice has been served i would like to suggest sir today is the era where the department is sharing information with you regarding the financial transactions on which they have a query from you so you as an assessee should be ready to provide all the details to satisfy that look no tax liability has escaped from my part suppose you don't find that and you find that tax liability has escaped then what to do then you should pay the tax along with interest on your own this does not mean that finally your assessment will be dropped because the department would say okay we caught him and now he is paying the tax but probably this may create a good base of you from saving yourself from any kind of levy or penalty this may ultimately result so i cannot guarantee but i have a good understanding to say that if the assessee would be compliant higher are the chances that penalty proceedings may not finally sustain against him so with this advice i would like to conclude that yes 148a notice is a good opportunity for the assessee to come clean 
even before the assessment. So I hope the content of this video would have been beneficial to you. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.